up everybody welcome to week three of graystone students digital we are going to start off with a little challenge slash game thing so i know a lot of you walton students have seen this already but we're going to add a little twist to it um this week we have created a graystone students bingo i know a lot of you guys have been playing bingo with your friends whether it's through your school um through different social media stuff but um we have one for graystone students and we are gonna make it live for all the campuses after this message is done, um, or we'll probably just do it as I'm speaking right now. Um, but basically the challenge is for each campus, um, Oconee, Walton, Ozora, if you get a bingo and you take a screenshot of your bingo and you sent it to one of us um, and DM it to us with picture proof of each of the things that you guys did, you could win a prize. So I'm gonna read to y'all some of these things um, and you guys start brainstorming and you guys think, which one should I do? So there's binged a Netflix show, Zoom call with a fam, read my Bible, you better have done that, put on jeans, ooh, guilty, I have not put on jeans since quarantine started, um, cooked a meal, rode a bike, went live on Instagram, made a TikTok, I know a lot of y'all have done that, me included, um, slept in past noon, played video games, watched students on YouTube, found a new music artist, gave yourself a haircut, yikes, um, stayed in PJs all day, forced on a family walk, FaceTimed a friend, watched a Sunday service. So those are just a few of the things that we have on this bingo card. So if you do this, and you take a picture of you doing each of those things and you submit it to us, the first people to do it get a prize. So yeah, guys, I'm gonna upload this now and go. We're gonna transition now to worship. Hey guys, and welcome back this week. We're so glad you're here with us tonight. My name's Ryan, this is Holly. We're gonna lead you in some worship tonight. You might still be in your living room, in your bedroom, or wherever you're at. Just hang out with us and let's worship God tonight.
So, Greystone, we're so excited for you joining us. Um, it was awesome worship from Holly and Ryan. And so we just want to take a few moments to just um, talk about Jesus and, and grow in our walk with him. And so um, Dan the Man, Daniel, our student pastor at Oconee, um, is bringing a word tonight. And we're just going to have a, a conversation off of it. I'm excited about it and um, can't wait to hear what God will do in all of our lives. So, Dan, what you got for us tonight? What's going on? All right. Well, uh, tonight, obviously, um, if you've caught up and you've been watching the first couple videos, uh, it looks a bit different. Um, this was just, you know, the creative genius of our team. We kind of wanted to do a little bit of a, a panel kind of style for y'all. Um, that way you're not just hearing from one person. You're going to hear um, a lot of different takes on what, you know, God specifically is doing through whatever word that I'm about to give to y'all. Um, Either way, we're really excited for it. It feels different. Uh, obviously, church as a general feels so different right now. Um, but the good part is, you know, isolation doesn't mean you're alone and community doesn't mean have to just be in person. Um, so we're super excited. Uh, today's topic is something I think everyone deals with, whether you're in quarantine or you're not, whether you're in the se se season of your life or you're not in the season of your life. It's something that everybody struggles with. And that word is peace. Um, peace is a huge topic, especially we know it's huge in your lives. We know it's huge in our lives. Um, so the way this is kind of going to look is we're talking about peace tonight. We've got a lot of questions that we know um, you guys may have. Uh, and then we're just going to talk about it a little bit. Um, make sure you're keeping up in the comment section. I know you've probably got some questions uh, that you want to throw down there. We want to hear your mm hmms and your virtual amens. So uh, make sure you're getting loud down there. Uh, drop an emoji every now and then uh but either way we're super excited um i think to, to start it off uh when it comes to the topic of peace uh, i mean y'all can agree or disagree with me uh, i think the two questions that most people um your age and our age wrestle with is number one how do you get it 
And number two, how do you make it last? Uh, and those are the two questions that and I feel like everybody was, wants to, you know, wrestle with. It's the questions about peace that you really want to know. Um, so here, here's how we're going to start off. Um, viewing how the world views peace. That's our first question to kind of think about is how, how do y'all think the world, like people outside of Christianity, inside of Christianity, we'll get to the inside of Christianity, but how do people that don't know Jesus, what did they view peace as? Go ahead, Halls. I see you. <laughs> oh, we love those little hand, the hands. Um, little hand gestures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm the first thing that pops up in my head is when people think of peace, they think of calm. They think of you know the yeah. calm waters. No thunderstorms are happening. No fear. Nothing is interrupting the the silence. You know. Um, and there's many different ways to interpret that. So. That's good. You got anything else? How does the, how does our, our world view peace, especially from like that perspective of like, I don't know if somebody's looking at this and they don't know Jesus. Like, obviously we see peace as a completely different thing, but that's really good. Also that, that kind of calm, uh, that feeling and thing, Reg, what you got? Yeah. I would just add to that. I think it's based on a feeling. And I think as long as life is easy going, you know, yeah. people are like, I'm good. But once it's not easy going, um, it doesn't have to be major. That disrupts mm -hmm. their um, interpretation of peace. Yeah, that's good. Carly, you got some? Um, I was just going to say, I think people outside of Christianity a lot of times see it situational. So as long as things like y'all are saying are good and whatnot, there's peace in that. Um, so it can be definitely according to what's happening in their life at yeah. the moment. That's huge. Um, and I think what, what we can get from like all three of our scenarios and even uh, leading up to this, I, I asked a few people, you know, what do you think peace is? Um, and we got a, just a bunch of different questions about, you know, it being, being a feeling and it being like, just, it depends what's going on in life. And I think a lot, I think we can all agree. Um, and Carly, you brought up the specific word. I think we were looking for it, is a lot of people see peace as it's situational. Mm -hmm. Like peace all depends on what my life looks like right now. Uh, so that being said, um, to us, to people that have been Jesus followers and people that are new followers, just whatever life looks like, um, to people that see Jesus as that, what is peace to us? That's our second question. What, what really is peace? Go ahead, Halls. I see you. Clap we love the awkward silence as we're trying to wait for me to turn my, my, um, uh volume on but uh <laughs> I don't know what peace is to me I literally had a situation yesterday where I was um I had a very good heavy moment where I was just overwhelmed um just a lot of uh things finding out finding out things that were going on in my family and then um my dad had surgery last week and thinking of the his follow-up and my dad my mom actually had somebody with the coronavirus in her office so just thinking of the risk involved with all of that and so all I could think of was who am I going to call who am I going to call who am I going to call to help me get through this and the first thing that popped up in my head praise the Lord because this doesn't always happen like 99% of the time it doesn't happen I was like you need to tell the Lord first <laughs> yeah. and so I like stood at my kitchen sink and just bowed my head and I was like God you are the only one that can handle this and you are in control of this take this off of me take this weight off my shoulders and the whole day was so much better so my my mind has been focused on him and what he can do that he is in control and it's not easy because we want to tangibly go to the things in front of us but that was what helped me the most so that's good Thank you for sharing that. I know it's a it's a heavy one. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has anything they want to add to that. Um, I think what we're really picking up, um, especially from what you're saying. Actually, go ahead, Rich. We'll touch on that in a sec. Go ahead. Cool. And just for me, it's a mindset. You know, um, things change, like we've already been talking about. But it's just keeping my mind guarded and at peace. You know, um, just still. And so. But for me, you got to find something that's secure, something that 
you trust and know that it's not going to let you down because if the thing you're trusting in will let you down, then that's going to cause more of a headache. Um, and that's where I find Jesus. I'm like, he already told us, um, I, I believe it's in John 16, 33, you know, in this world, you will have trouble. So when your leader tells you, Hey, this is going to happen. <laughs> um, yeah. it's kind of good to know that ahead of time, but he says, Hey, don't be overwhelmed. I, I've overcome it. Um, and you just ride with him through the storm. So it's a mindset for me. That's good. Yeah. Uh, the, kind of like similar to what we were just talking about um i think the world and and a lot of times even us like i i can say from like a personal experience um from following jesus for a while now as i think a lot of times we can fall into this trap where peace and and how we experience peace has so much to do with the season that we're in um yeah that that we lose it you know what i mean like you're so caught up in you know my season of life is good right now i think i'm at peace and then things change. Like the way life works, the way I grew up learning it is you're either in a storm or you're heading into one. Uh, so the, th- the thing about that being a situational about whether the storm is there or not, if you're in the storm, there's obviously no peace. But even when you're outside of the storm, you got to be worried about the storm coming. So you're not at peace either. So the, th- the issue with it being situational is that it never lasts. Like it, it goes, it's just always highs and lows. Um, and it, picking up from what both of you said, you know, you said uh, just it's that mindset of being still and finding that time with Jesus. And Paul, as you were saying how, you know, even in those difficult times, the one question you always seem to ask yourself is, who am I going to call? Yeah. And the one thing that just reminds me of is, is I think what the biggest takeaway from this whole conversation is going to be uh, is that peace is not a situation, is that peace is a person. Yeah. It's 100%. And, and it is always has been and it always will be. I mean, you look at like, Jesus' birth, like, let's take it back to Christmas. Like, one of the first things the angel says when he appears to the world is the Prince of Peace is coming. Yeah. Like, uh, that be like, peace has always been um, a person. It has nothing to do with what your life looks like. And it's like both of you said, it, it's, it's that people that you're going to run to. And that person has to be constant or that peace isn't going to last. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I don't know, anything y'all want to add on to that, please, please do. You know, that whole thought of, peace is and will always be a person and that person simply put is is jesus like there is no other way there is no other source um carly got something you want to add on i just think um especially like now in this crazy time like we're all in this together um it's so important to remember that it's a person because it's constant so so much of our lives have changed and like as adults, as students, as babies, like everything has changed. I mean, my dog is probably so confused why I am constantly. (laughs) Life has changed for everyone. Um, And so remembering that his peace, him being peace doesn't change is something I've had to think about every day, getting through this crazy season um, of Corona season. Um, And so I think that's so encouraging when you look at it like that. And as Christians, we can just cling to that and know that's one thing that's not going to change during this time. And I can have inner peace because I know him. I know peace. I know he loves me. So come on. That's good. That's so good. Yes. No, that, that, I mean, that, that's perfect. Um, Mm -hmm. And that kind of leads me into um, this other question that, that we can discuss um, cause you were talking about the, the reason so good to have Jesus is because you know, he's constant that whether life is going great, he's there. And whether life is not going so great, he's there. And that's why you need that constant night because life is so inconsistent. Like things change every single day. Um, so that peace, it, peace, I feel like, you know, true peace is constant. It, it doesn't end. Um, and so if peace is a person, and obviously we're getting to the to the understanding that you know Jesus is the embodiment of peace, like he is walking peace. Um, what would because you were saying you know, even your dog is, is confused at everything that's going on, and you know life just seems different. What would you know? You said your life, but what would every student watching this? How even us? You know what does life? What would life look like if we finally like accepted that? Like we finally fully believed that peace is Jesus. It is a person. Like what would change? It's like, it's, yeah, pretty much. Like what would change? I'll go ahead and chime That's, in. I don't have the go ahead. hand button. To do. <laughs> Please do. Go ahead. <laughs> um, but I would think kind of like what, um, I can't remember who said it earlier, but that peace is a mindset. 
And I think it's all a battle of the mind. Like we were talking about anxiety the, um, like two weeks ago, and now we're talking about peace. And it's a choice. And I feel like for me, when I remember that God is in control of everything that's happening, that brings me peace. Someone said something, um, and I have to change my mindset on this too, because I heard a pastor say the other day that this whole coronavirus situation took all of us by surprise. We, nobody was expecting it. We did not think a month ago that we would all be stuck in our houses trying to figure out, hey, what are we supposed to do now? Um, but this didn't take God by surprise at all. Like he knew this was going to happen. He knew this was yeah. coming. And so when he said that, that automatically, like my mindset changed on this whole situation because I was like, God, if you knew that this was going to happen, then I have no reason to worry or to fear, but to just have peace. Because clearly if you allowed for this to happen, then you're going to bring a way out of it. And so I think for a student who's listening to this, if you really grasp the idea that God is in control and that it's just a, it's a choice, it's a mindset, and you, you keep your eyes fixated on him, you'll definitely be able to feel that peace. Because the second I heard that, I mean, my whole demeanor and my whole um, posture changed. I was like, whoa, that's so true. God is in yeah. control of all of this. Why do I have to be fearful? I, I can have peace. This didn't take him by surprise, you know? So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's what I would say to encourage a student who is trying to figure out how to have peace through all of this and in any circumstance that might happen later on in life, to just change your mindset and focus on the Lord and, you know, remember who's in control of everything that happens. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like that's that. good. No, 100%. That's huge. Like God is not, God, like when things are obviously happening in your life and things change so fast and, and a situation pops up, God doesn't go, Oh snap. Like <laughs> he doesn't call an angels meeting and go, what do we do? Like how did this <laughs> slip by? Like yeah. God is not taken Angel, away. Get over is, here. <laughs> exactly. Like how did we lose track of this one? Like that just doesn't happen. Uh, God sat on a throne millions of years ago, knowing that on this day at this time, this would be what your life was look like. And then millions of years ago, before all of time and the world became into existence, he had already solved it. Like he's figured it out. Uh, no, that's good. That That's huge. Um, and so one of the things you, you, you touched on uh, is obviously, you know, we talked about anxiety not too long ago. Um, and I think things like anxiety and fear are, are things that, you know, people and we, and I'll tell you, I, I wrestle with every single day. Um, because that, that's one of the reasons you need peace to be so constant is because I'm pretty sure you're, anybody watching this and we can all agree that anxiety and fear are so constant. Like they love to play games and they're like, they're good at what they do. Give credit where it's due. Fear and anxiety are good at what they do. And the one thing it wants to do is take you away from peace. That's what it is. And the opposite of peace to me is anxiety. It's fear. It's, it's struggle. Um, and so, and I feel like you can't talk about peace without talking about anxiety and without talking about, about fear. Um, and so one, I think the biggest passage of scripture that you could take away from this is um, coming from our boy, Peter, you know, first Peter five, seven says that you can cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And one of the reasons I grew up hearing this verse, and maybe for y'all, it's the millionth time you hear it. Maybe it's the first time you're hearing this. Uh, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And I've read that verse since I was a child. Um, and I remember being in some tough situations and being like, oh, like, that's it. That's all you got to do. Just cast your anxiety. And then, you know, I'd go pray and be like, all right, God, you're know, worried. Here you go. And then, you know, I kind of still feel overwhelmed with like, okay, does this mean God is not showing up? Does this mean like it's just a bunch of different things? Um, and you know, you read that verse and I think you read it way too fast. You're going to lose the verse. You know what I mean? Um, and I think, especially for me, part of the reason this verse was so hard, it's so simple yet. It's so good about grasping that and understanding you can cast our anxiety because he cares for you is I don't think we truly understand how much he cares for you. You know what I mean? Um, I don't think we can fully, and I think that's something we'll never be able to grasp is how good, how much God, cares about you and how much he cares about the good part of you the bad part of you bad part about you and the ugly part of you the part you don't want to let out the part you can't show people um, is you've got to know that god cares evenly about every single aspect of your life all of it um and so 
you can't, I feel like you can't talk about peace without talking about the opposite of it at the same time. Cause I think these are things that we all wrestle with. I think you can all agree with that. <laughs> um, Pauls, go ahead. Yeah, the song that we are about to teach everyone is called Graves in the Gardens. And the second verse says something like that exactly. It says, I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all and you still call me friend. Because the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. There's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. And this song has been stuck in my head. And it's a good one to have stuck in your head. Just the point of the whole song is saying, God, that there's nothing in this world that compares to you. Um, you are above it all. There's nothing better than you. And you should be the only one I focus on. And that's that's been my heart the last three weeks. But last week was way more difficult than the first two. And it was just everything kept piling on at once. And so when it was the reality that I needed to sit before the Lord and tell him what was on my mind, um, and no matter how ugly I cried, <laughs> I just needed to be real. I needed to journal. I needed to pray. I needed to do read scripture, whatever I needed to do to really um, get myself to the Lord. And yeah, it's not one of my favorite things to cry. Um, I hate it. You get snotty, you get gross, you get puffy, it's all the things. Um, but you just, you uh, have to do that. And like you said, cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. It's so real. And that's the thing that we have to remember is that he's not just someone, he is the one. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's good. Um, so, yeah, go ahead, Rich, please. And I just want to add on to that real quick. Um, you know, like your verse, First Peter 5, 7, it's like, it's not just a scripture we're telling or sharing to people, um, as you're already hearing from all five of us, um, it's real in our life. And so that's what I appreciate highly about your vulnerability. And um, I think it's so on point, Dan, for, you know, not just this time, but even later when people watching this on repeat. So just wanted to throw that out there as well. Yeah, that's, that's really good, for sure. Um, one of the things I think I heard earlier, I think Vanessa said it, uh, or maybe it was Holly. I don't really think it fully matters. Um, one of the things we talked about, about peace is, um, peace is, it's a choice, you know, yeah. it's an option. Um, and I think that's, that's a decision you've got to make every single day. Um, so coming back to those two questions, you know, we're kind of getting closer to our, our timeline here. Um, going back to those two questions that I feel like most people wrestle with and most people want to know about peace is how do you get it? And how do you make it last? So let's tackle that first question. When it comes to peace and you're in a, a time of your life where things aren't going well, or you're in a time of your life where things are kind of shaping up a bit, how do you get peace? Go ahead, Carl. Um, I think getting peace, if we're saying like peace is Jesus, it's getting in the word, word and like having a relationship with him. So um, the way you get peace is by being with him and like in constant communication with him and really developing that relationship in many different ways, whether, you know, you feel closest to him during worship music or while you read your Bible or just on your knees praying or like a combination of all of those things. Um, for me, that's how I get that relationship with him. And that's where that peace comes from is knowing him. So like, the more you know him, the more you can feel that peace is kind of how I feel. That's good. I think that's a good reminder of how, I mean, honestly, how, how available it is, like how easy it is to get it. Mm -hmm. Like there's, there's nothing you got, like you don't have to, one of the jokes I love to make at, at Oconee is you don't have to go into your room, sacrifice a lamb, make a circle and get on your knees, like for, to get peace and God to hear you. You just literally like eyes closed, eyes open, standing wherever you are, you'd be like, God, I need peace. And God doesn't go, uh-uh, get on your knees, like, right now. Like, <laughs> like, like God changed that a long time ago. Like, times have changed. Exactly. <laughs> the rules have changed. Uh, how do you get it? It's just like that. I mean, it's relational. It's, it's as simple as just asking for it. And I think we overlook that so much. And we love to complicate that. It's crazy. And literally, peace is, I mean, it's a question away. It's, it's a call for help, help away. I mean, it's right there. Um, God is not going to deny that. So Holly, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say that the first thing that 
thought I thought of earlier was our first step needs to be faith. It's like you said, it's a choice. It's faith, you know, like it's developing that relationship with him. Like Carly said, it's not going to be easy the first step if you've never done it, but you have to make it a choice that even if I'm uncomfortable, even if I'm not in the right place, like if you are in a crowd of people and you're overwhelmed, then close your eyes for a second, take a deep breath and ask the Lord for peace. If you are in your room, bawling your eyes out, <laughs> open your Bible. And if you don't have a Bible, there's an app. It's a version app. You can open it up. There's plenty of ways you could pull up scripture. And the first thing you could do is pull up First Peter 5, 7 and read that verse over and over again until you feel comfortable to tell the Lord what's on your heart. It's all about the first choice and the first step. Um, it's not about how well you can do it. It's not about how intricate your words can be. That you, Our prayers don't have to be beautiful. Our prayers yeah. don't have to be so creative. They just have to be real. And that's what God wants. He wants us as we are. And that's the beautiful part of the picture is he wants us as we are. We don't have to change anything. We just need to be ourselves. So it's the choice. It's the first step is faith. That's good. That first question, go ahead. I was going to say, I think jumping off that thought, it made me think about um, when I talked earlier about changing your mindset, I had to learn how to approach God differently about my circumstances too. Because I used to go to God with my hands closed, like, please make this situation better. Please take this away from me. Rather than having my hands open and saying, okay, God, this really isn't what I pictured happening right now, but what do you want from me? What do you want me to learn? And because a lot of times we go to God asking him to just change everything so quickly, make things better right away. And that's not how God works. If God allows for something to come into our life, he's going to teach us something. So we have to go into things with our hands open saying, okay, God, I might not like what situation I'm in right now, but give me the strength and the peace to get through this and tell me what you want from me. And it kind of reminds me of like different passages of scripture. I mean, I was just flipping through my Bible as you guys were talking and I was going through Psalms and every single time David wrote a song to God and he was saying, God, I'm afraid, I'm full of fear. God was always right there with comfort right away, you know? And so um, David wasn't asking for him to change the circumstance or take his pain away. He was just asking God for comfort and help me get through this. And so I think if we do that and we approach God that way, that's another way that we can also find peace as we spend time with him, as we get in his word, um, when we're crying, all those different things. I know I've had to learn to be that way, so. Yeah, that's good. Wrestling with that, that first question, so is how do you get it? And I think we can all um, sum it up. What we've all just said um, is understanding that peace is a person. And if you want peace, ask him. Yeah. That's really what it is. Like you're not even necessarily going to God and saying, Hey, I need peace. Because if you fully believe that Jesus is peace, like peace is a person, then just ask for Jesus. And that's the thing. Like it's, it's, it's not like, I mean, whatever your life looks like and whether you feel like you are super far from God in this season, or you feel like you're super close, um, your distance from God doesn't matter because he's right there. <laughs> like he's right here and he has not moved. Um, so how do you get it? It's as simple as ask for it. It's, it's a simple, I, I think a lot of times people love to, um, I think we underestimate how much God wants to hear from us. I think, I think we underestimate that so much. Um, I think God wants to hear your problems. And if you really believe that peace is a person and that is Jesus, um, and you know that Jesus is also the embodiment of good, he is like, he is love and he is good. Then you can know fully for sure that the, si the season of life you're in or whatever situation you're in or is coming or whatever, you can stand 100% confident that this is going to be good, that this is going to be for your good. Like God does not work anything out for your bad. He, God does not work things out for your harm. Uh, he only works things out for your good. And that peace is understanding uh, that it is a person and it is peace is the confidence that you can stand in your situation and say, this is going to be for my good. And I think that would change everything. Imagine a world where you live in, where every situation that comes your way, you stand and you go, it doesn't matter how this ends. This is going to be my, for my good. It would change everything. Um, 
So we know how to get it. Now here's the, here's the final question. Uh, how do you make it last? I, it's, I feel like a lot of people are looking at this and saying, you know, that is good. I believe, you know, Jesus is peace and I know how to get it. Um, but like six months down the road from now, how do I make it last? Probably go ahead. Ooh, we got some hands up. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> I think uh, the biggest thing I can think of is discipline. It's something that I'm not great at. Self-control is not something that I'm very good at, but discipline is something I'm trying to work better at work towards yeah. um so it's literally of just a choice of saying okay I'm going to make sure that I spend at least 15 minutes in the word or this much time in prayer whatever it is it is a discipline um because we can't expect the relationship to form like there are people in the students there are people in your schools that you know of but you don't know and who do you want God to be? Someone you know of or someone you know? And that's where the discipline comes in. That's where the faith comes in. You have to make the choice. Um, I'm not trying to point at the screen. <laughs> uh, You're talking to me? But you, you have to. <laughs> Just like, that I got it. It. Well, I didn't, realize, didn't realize I was bad at this. My fault. Right, uh, sorry. <laughs> But yeah, it's a discipline. You have to make the choice and you have to work at it. So you have to be, you can't be lazy about it. If you are anxious and you're saying, no, I don't really want to talk to God, then that's a choice you made. Um, I don't mean that to sound mean or anything, but that's the choice we make. Like do it all the time where yeah. I have to make the discipline I or make the choice. I have to have the discipline to yep. say, am I, who am I going to call? <laughs> and is yeah. it going to be God? You know, the Matthew 6, 33 or 34, I can't remember which one it says, but it says, seek God first. Seek, yeah. uh, I'm going to pull it up, right. actually. I have it pulled up because it's a scripture I'm studying um, this week. So it says, seek first the king, his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So we have to seek toward him. We have to seek him as a whole. Yep. Sorry about the truck. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was your stomach. I'm not gonna lie. Sorry. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> that's fine. That, no, that's good. That's good. I th that's a good reminder of uh, you're as close to God as you want to be. So that, that's really good. Um, Red, just something you want to add to that? Yeah, just the power of remembering. You know, I think we forget um, often. And in the Bible, the word remember comes up a lot more than we give it credit yeah. for. And so it's like remembering our feelings in this moment, like, Hey, I'm overwhelmed. I'm stressed. Well, how did you get over that moment? Well, I went to Jesus. He's a person. Next time it happens. Hey, remember last, this happened before I've seen this before. And so, um, you guys don't lose heart. Don't forget when God bails us out, you know, I know yeah. we got friends that love to forget when we came through for them. Um, Jesus like, Hey, don't forget. I've come yeah. through for you before you didn't have it all together. He's there all the time for us. Yeah. So remember it. That's good. Um, kind of looking at my clock now. We are approaching that, that bit of a timeline. Uh, okay. I think this conversation has been great. I think it's been really raw. And I think that's what, uh, I mean, I, from what I look for, I, that, I mean, that's what I need. Because uh, we don't want to come in here and try to be some like glossed up, like we don't go through things. We are yeah. perfection. That's just not who we are. Um, and I appreciate you guys. This conversation has been really raw. I know everybody looking in on this. Uh, hopefully you're going to get something from this. Uh, and I'll go ahead. Um, like Holly said, we're going to do a, a song here in a little bit called Graves into Gardens. And it might be a song you've heard before. It might be a song you've never heard before. Um, and I don't know what quarantine has looked for you, but maybe this is a time for you. You know, you're kind of realizing this has been a, a, a lot harder for me than I thought it was. Um, I'm an extreme extrovert and I have to be around people. So I am struggling. Um, maybe you're realizing that peace is something that you really need right now. And you're just not realizing how attainable, how easy it is to get it. Um, so we're going to invite you all into like this moment of maybe you just need to go find some space for yourself. I know you're at home, uh, go to your room, uh, just sit there, listen, maybe to these words, sing along, whatever it's going to look like for you. Um, you don't need to be specifically at church to have a moment with God. You can have one in your bedroom. You can have one in your closet. Um, I was going to say bathroom, but we'll leave it there. Um, so I hope you guys really enjoy this. Graves in the Gardens is, is a great song about how God can turn, you know, a situation 
that looks like death. Uh, that looks like a grave and turn it into a complete garden of just everything um, you need, what you expect it to be. So um, great conversation, guys. I think we're gonna we're gonna pray it out now. We're gonna and hopefully lead into some worship here. So um, y'all want me to start? How's it, Reg? You got a specific way for this to look, or just you just want? To hey, pray? you just pray for us, man, and we'll hey. transition out from there. All right, let's talk to God. Um, God, we love you. We thank you for uh, for some raw conversations that we get to have like this. Um, I enjoy these conversations so much. I love these people, um, and hopefully they know uh, they know that of how much uh, you love them, how much I love them. Um, God, we're thankful for times like this in the middle of a quarantine in 2020 um, that we get to just have a raw and just simple conversation about peace, about what it is, uh, not just what it is, but more importantly, who it is, God, and we know um, that peace is a person. It has nothing to do with what life looks like right now, whether life is going absolutely amazing or it's going absolutely horrible. God, uh, peace is a constant and it can be with us whenever and wherever because it's a person and it has nothing to do with what's going on. Um, I just pray for everybody that's hearing this. Would you just let us believe that? If we really grasp that and believe that and instead of hearing it, we did something with it, uh, it would change everything. I 100% believe that. Uh, Anything that you come into contact with doesn't doesn't leave the same. Um, we love you, God. We just pray for this conversation. Uh, let it do some work in our hearts. Uh, lead us into some worship right now. Um, we love you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen.
man, enjoyed the wonderful time of just learning about peace, that peace is a person and all of that. And so we thank Daniel for his leadership in this um, conversation and his awesome. And as we transition, it's bittersweet for us. Um, as you probably already have heard, um, Daniel is transitioning from, from us and moving on, but it's all good. And life transitions happen. And man, we just wish him the best. We support him. We have a friend. We're not losing a friend or anything like that. Um, and so students, you still are going to be cared for and loved. And so at this time, we want to just stretch our hands out and pray for Dan the man. <laughs> um, and so I'll start and then we'll pray. But please let Dan knows how, know how much he means to you and has meant to you. Um, man, whether it's a letter or whether it's a phone call, man, any and everything is good. It's as leaders, we pour so much out. And so he's done nothing short of that for you guys. And you testify that. And parents, you know. Um, so don't forget about your boy. We're going to show the love. And uh, we're going to pray for him. Well, here we are. Anything crying on a Zoom. Y'all want to say afternoon. about him real quick? We're, we're good. We're good. I'm Daniel, thanks for always bringing the humor and bringing the fun. <laughs> as a person, as we all know, that I automatically go to worst case scenarios. Oh, here's a wasp. Um, as, as I automa automatically go to that, I just appreciate you always turning my head to the other direction. So thanks. Yeah. Love you. That was a high five. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, your screen is like right next to mine. This phone. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll go ahead and pray. Um, Carly, you mind ending us in prayer? Yeah, like, I'm going to pray and then um, you be the last one. And if y'all want to pray in the middle, we'll make it happen. All right. Look at my hand. Stretched out. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Father God, thank you for our friend, Daniel. Um, but more so, he's your son. And you didn't... You weren't caught by surprise on this, and Lord, this is part of your plan, and we pray that he just grows in this role, that um, he's well-received, and um, he makes an impact even greater than the footprint he's left on all of our hearts, Lord God. He's a special young man, and you're not done with him. You're not finished with him, and so, Lord, we know that um, he is walking in obedience to you and that you are going to do your perfect will, getting more people, save more people into your kingdom and making you um, attractive in Jesus to a world that may overlook you. So use him mightily as he goes. All right, dear Lord, I just want to start off by saying thank you for Daniel. Um, I am so grateful that I have had this chance to learn from him, Lord, um, and you did that so strategically. Um, dear Lord, I just pray for Daniel in this next season that he's able to just grow so much, God. Um, I've seen the impact he's had on students, on adults, on everyone in between. And um, I'm just so grateful to have witnessed this, Lord, and I know it's not going to stop. Um, thank you for this team and for being in great hands, dear Lord, and just being able to balance off each other. Um, we are so excited for Daniel, and we're going to miss him, but we know you have great things ahead for him. Thank you so much, Lord, and everyone pray. Amen. 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 I appreciate that. I am very excited for this next season, um, but I'm also confident that, you know, Walt and Ozora and Okoti are going to be in some really strong hands, so I'm rooting for y'all the whole way, so I love y'all. Thank you. You're good. Yep, you got our numbers. <laughs> cool. I just like high fiving the screen. <laughs> well, at this time, we're going to go ahead and transition to small groups. Um, and by this time, your small group leader should have reached out to you. And um, we'll, we can't wait to see you in person again. So to take care and God bless. See you soon. Miss y'all. <laughs> Stop.